What's up everyone, welcome to Rhino Feed. Today we are building a 60% keyboard. This video of course is brought to you by banggood.com so you can find all the parts in the link in the description. Or of course you can source your parts elsewhere uh, because 60% parts are fairly common. But anyway, the parts you'll need are a plate, a PCB, a case, keycaps, switches, and stabilizers as well as some M2 screws which probably come with a case but for some odd reason they forgot about them. You'll also need some 6040 rosin core solder before you begin. Let's start with the stabilizers. So if you happen to purchase cherry stabilizers, they'll have two little plastic pieces that you may want to clip. A lot of people like to clip their stabilizers because it removes some of the mushiness that is involved in the stabilizers. Of course, the stabilizers that are on banggood.com are not cherry stabilizers, so you won't have anything to clip off of them. But in any case, you will want to lube your stabilizers just to make them very nice and smooth. That's quite easy to do, you just have to get some Permatex grease. Again, I'll put a link in the description for that. You'll need a 6.25U spacebar stabilizer and then 4.2U stabilizers. A lot of times you can pick up official cherry stabilizers for around 10 bucks. And I definitely think it's worth it over the Chinese stabilizers on banggood.com. Sorry, banggood. So all you have to do is clip them into your PCB. Not a problem at all, the plate does not get in the way. The next step is to place all of your key switches into the plate and make sure they are all correctly aligned once you align it with your PCB. Of course, double check all of the pins on the back, make sure they're straight. You may have to remove one, straighten it up, and that's easy enough. You can use your finger or some tweezers to do so. And then of course you'll want to make sure that your bottom row is properly aligned before you solder. And to do that I just place the keycaps over the switches and make sure everything is aligned properly. If you accidentally purchase PCB mount switches which will have these two plastic stems on them, you can easily clip them off and use them in this context with a plate. I ordered the Gatoron Greens from banggood.com which are actually PCB mount, not plate mount, like they suggest in their listing. I put them in the backspace and the escape key just to have a nice clicky switch on those keys for fun. And then I used KL Box Browns just because I had a lot of those lying around already. Once you've got all the switches in place, it is now time for soldering. And don't get too scared from this. This is actually a lot easier than you think. The trickiest part about it is being patient, having a steady hand, and making sure that you don't burn out your PCB of course, you could go out and spend $100 on a nice Hakko soldering iron set with temperature control and the works. But I don't think that's necessary if you don't plan to do a ton of soldering in the future. I personally just have a Radio Shack soldering iron that was about 25 or 30 bucks. It'll get the job done, just don't keep the soldering iron on the PCB for more than a couple seconds at a time. If you do happen to make a mistake, you can always use a solder sucker to remove excess solder and try it again. And of course, you can always add more solder. I'm not a professional, so I will post a link in the description to some really great videos from Adafruit Industries. What I like to do when I solder a keyboard is solder the four corner switches first and use clamps so that I get a nice solid connection. Then I can continue soldering the switches on the inside. Now that everything is soldered, you might want to test the keyboard by plugging it in and using a software called Switch Hitter or something similar. Once everything is working, you can go ahead and place your assembly into the case, screw it in with these six screws, add your keycaps, and you're good to go. One thing I did want to mention is that the PCB is the GH60 that does allow full programmability and it does have different layouts to choose from. Of course I just went with the standard ANSI layout and I haven't changed anything with programming but if you'd like you can use the easy AVR software to adjust everything to exactly how you'd like. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you found this video helpful. As always I'll put a link to all the products in the video description. If you use coupon code KEYCAPS you will save an additional 17% which is pretty cool. Of course, that's not the point of this video. This is a build guide, so you can source any of the parts that you like, and you can go really expensive or you can go really cheap. 
And that's kind of the fun of it. So that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. As always, we'll see you in the next one.